What's up guys, I am super excited to be here today taking a look at NVIDIA's new RTX 3080. Nah, start again. NVIDIA's new RTX 3080 is here. This is EVGA's XC3 Ultra version of that card. Oh, go again. What's up guys? This is NVIDIA's new RTX 3080. Specifically, this is EVGA's XC3 Ultra version of that card. And, uh, nah, start again. This is NVIDIA's RTX 3080. It's got 8,704 CUDA cores, a boost clock of 1.71 gigahertz, a base clock of 1.44 gigahertz, 10 gigs of GDDR6 memory. <sighs> 320-bit memory interface, second-generation ray tracing cores, third-generation tensor cores, uh, Ampere architecture. Um. <sighs> Screw it, let's just overclock this thing. Need a Windows or Office key but don't want to pay retail? MMORC.com has all the best deals and a sweet discount for BPS Customs viewers. Just head over to the site link below and enter code BAN35 for 35% off your order total, meaning you could snag Windows 10 Home for under 10 bucks. Fill out your email and place your order and then click the extract code button at the top of the page. From there, it's as easy as heading to your Windows activation settings and inputting your shiny new key. For more information, head to MMORC.com or check out the links below. So obviously I was joking around in the intro. This is clearly a very exciting day and this is a very exciting product. The RTX 3080 is more powerful than any consumer grade GPU that we have ever seen. And it comes in at what ends up being a pretty reasonable price point as well. Founders Edition reviews came out yesterday and I was goofing on in the intro because I'm sure that your inboxes were absolutely overflowing with information, reviews, and performance evaluations of that card. These are partner model cards. These are AIB cards, and today, the 17th, is when we could talk about these. I'm not quite sure why there were two different embargoes just one day apart, but this actually does coincide with the actual time that you're supposed to be able to purchase these cards. So we have a couple in the studio here. I have one more over in the office as well. This is the MSI Gaming X Trio. You're gonna see this in my workstation build. That video is coming out on Sunday. So just a couple days from today. And if you don't wanna miss it, make sure you get subscribed to the channel because that system is something else. But today we're actually just gonna focus on EVGA's XC3 Ultra version of the RTX 3080. Now directly from NVIDIA, the RTX 3080 Founders Edition MSRPs for $699.99, so $700. And you are gonna pay a little bit of a price premium for a lot of AIB partner models with their honestly tried and true cooler designs. Now, NVIDIA this time around obviously did a lot of work on their cooler and it looks great but it does come with that really funky, weird 12 pin connector and that awful looking Y splitter adapter that you're gonna have to use. Whereas partner model cards just come with good old fashioned PCIe plugs. And that's exactly what we have here today on the XC3 Ultra. Now there are other partner model cards like this Gaming X Trio that actually use more power. This card uses three eight pin adapters. However, there's still a significant power draw when just using two, as you can get 150 watts from each of these plus 75 from the slot. So hopefully we're not gonna run into any power issues here. Although with the 20 series cards, when we were overclocking, we certainly were power limited in some scenarios. One of the most controversial things about this card in particular is this, the red accents on the tail end of the card. Now, EVJ has been listening to community feedback and literally as I sat down to film this video, they reached out to me and told me that, yes, there will be other options for people to purchase if you don't want red. So, this is going to be something that you can change if you want to and you don't necessarily have to have the red accents in your machine. Now, as far as raw specs go, you're basically getting the same package as you would with the FE card, except the XC3 Ultra is gonna be clocked up just slightly to 1755 megahertz versus 1710 on the Founders Edition card. Other than that though, you still get the 10 gigs of GDDR6 memory and you get a three fan cooler versus a two fan design with the FE. But we are not here to specifically talk at length about this card, although this is the one that we are gonna be using for our testing. 
on our test bench right behind me. We're gonna be overclocking today, and spoiler alert, I have done some pre-testing, and there's not as much headroom here as I maybe would have liked. However, there is certainly some, and especially on the memory side of things, you can still tweak this card to run faster than it does out of the box, and you should do that so that you get all the performance that you pay for. So let's get to it. I'm gonna show you how to overclock this and then show you what, got, what kind of performance gains you can get just with a couple of clicks. Just figured I'd give you guys a little bit of a look at the EVGA XC3 Ultra version of the RTX 2080. Shot some B-roll of it too, so uh, you'll get some close-ups and be able to see what this card is all about. But honestly, it is one of the smallest RTX 3080s on the market. It's a strictly a dual slot card, which is unusual in this day and age. Uh, it has three fans on it, and it is fairly compact. So hopefully the cooler can handle all the power that it's about to get uh, when we try to overclock it. Two important tools that are important to be familiar with when you're gonna be doing GPU overclocking is GPU-Z and EVGA's Precision X1. There are other tuning utilities that you can use instead of Precision X1. However, because we are using an EVGA card here, I figured Precision X1 is the way to go. Now, GPU-Z is gonna be your monitoring utility. Not only is it gonna give you the stats on your graphics card, how much power you're drawing, what your GPU and memory clocks are, what your temperature is, but it's also going to be able to show you if you are hitting a performance limit in any specific category. Now, what we look for is perf cap reason. Right now the card's idle, but if we were to hit a power limit, this would actually tell you that it's power that's limiting the performance of the card and it's not necessarily that it can't go faster. Precision X1 works very similarly to other tuning utilities. There are a bunch of sliders that you can play with, tune up and down in order to get the most performance out of your card. So this is actually where we're gonna be starting here today. Just taking a look at this, you have adjustments for your GPU's memory, you have adjustments for the GPU clock, you have the voltage control, which is not always something that you have access to, it depends on the card. And then you have your power targets and your GPU temperature limits. Down here on the right is your fan speed control. And when you're doing overclocking, consider that you are gonna be generating more heat and you likely will need to increase your fan speed in order to keep your temperatures down. What we're gonna do right now is we're gonna run a baseline test to see how fast the RTX 3080 is. And then we're gonna start moving some dials. Okay, we have our result for our baseline and we're not gonna worry about the CPU score here. In fact, I don't even know why I ran that portion of the test, but our graphic score is 8615. I'm gonna write that down real quick, 8615. It also shows you the average FPS for the graphics tests. So we're gonna keep that in mind and we're gonna be ready to run it again, but it's time to start playing with some sliders. So. Like I did mention, you are probably gonna to want to increase your fan speed just to keep your, C your GPU's temperatures under control. You can leave it on auto, and sometimes the controller will do a good job of adjusting fan speed accordingly because there is a, a curve. You can actually see the curve if you, uh, uh, right here. So it shows you the, uh, the fan curve that you're gonna be working with if you leave it on auto, which is typically fine, but you wanna keep your GPU's temperature as low as possible because that will allow you to clock higher. So we're gonna leave it on auto, but just keep in mind that you might wanna adjust this or adjust the fan curve. Now, the first thing you should really do when you're dealing with overclocking these is take the power slider and the temperature slider and just move them all the way up as far as they'll go. For this particular card, you can only increase power an additional 8% uh, to 108%. So hit apply there. And this allows the GPU to scale up to 91C or to go up to 91C and also to draw more power than it is rated for. Um, it's not gonna hurt the card. There's a lot of uh, protections built into to these modern GPUs and cranking up your power limit will allow it to boost higher because if you go over to GPU-Z, and you take a look at what the limiting factor is here, the performance cap reason is power. And you see it, as soon as you hover over a section of the chart here, it shows you right here what exactly the limiting factor is. So the GPU is idle, then it kicks into time spy, and we're limited by PWR or power. So increasing your power limit is actually going to just give you free performance without actually adjusting any clocks at all. The next thing to worry about is gonna be your voltage. Now, 
you don't necessarily need to adjust the voltage slider if you're not going super high. I do recommend bumping it up just a little bit here because you could actually just crank this all the way up and it won't, again, hurt your GPU at all. And again, it's not playing with your clocks. I don't think we need to do that. In my pre-testing, I found that for this card, this was the right setting and this is what we're gonna go with. I recommend playing with it just a little bit. And if you're ever on the verge of maybe getting a stable overclock, but it just crashes, play with the voltage a little bit and you should maybe, maybe it'll allow you to get there. The next thing is gonna be clock. Now, clock and memory, so GPU clock and memory clock are the main things gonna drive performance or additional performance that you're gonna get out of an overclock. And you should always focus on GPU clock speed first. That's going to be the most return uh, for your efforts here. Um, I recommend starting small and working up in increments of usually 10 megahertz, unless you really for some reason know that a card can achieve a certain clock speed. You don't wanna just blast off right out of the gate because you're just gonna get crashes. Either your driver's gonna crash or sometimes your entire system crashes. So uh, we're gonna start off here with um, an increase of, uh, let's say 30 megahertz, which doesn't sound like a lot. Um, and we're not gonna touch the memory at first. What I recommend is moving your clock up, your GPU clock up as high as it'll go until it crashes, backing it off, and then starting to play with your memory. Because even though memory scales really well on these cards, it's not gonna give you as much of a performance impact as your GPU clock. And you want the GPU clock to be as high as it can be while also being stable. And sometimes introducing instability with memory can interfere with that. So let's go ahead and run a test at uh, plus 30 megahertz and with the power limit and GPU limit increased. All right, we've got our plus 30 megahertz uh, result and it's 8639 on the graphics side. Let me just write that down, 8639. So just a very moderate bump here. You can still see we still are power limited and I have a feeling that that's just gonna be the way we are throughout our testing here, unfortunately. So, cause we can't adjust this anymore. So. Let's go up to uh, to 40 and rerun it. Results for our plus 40 are in, and that's 86.53 for our graphics score. Now, I'm not going to bore you guys with continuing to go up 10 megahertz. Let me just do this off camera, but this is how you do it. You incrementally increase until you hit a point where the test fails. And then you could back it off one click, and then that is going to be your quote unquote initial stable overclock for the GPU. And then we'll, we'll move on to memory. So we actually did fare better here than I did in my preliminary testing. I was able to pass at, a, at plus 115 on the core, but just take a look at what kind of power this made the car draw. That was over 350 watts at times. So just be aware that you are dealing with a pretty power hungry card, especially if you're pushing an overclock and obviously we are still power limited here. So we're gonna start inching up the memory in the very same way. Now, just like the previous generation's card, memory on these cards is very uh, accepting of higher clock speeds. So what I'm gonna do is actually, I'm gonna start here at 500. Normally this is pretty high to start at, but I'm pretty confident that, that this card can handle it. And then we're gonna go up from there. So this configuration of plus 115 on the core, plus 500 on the memory, gets us a graphic score of 8922, which is now quite a bit higher than we had previously. So I'm gonna keep playing with the memory just like I did with the core, inching it up. In memory, you could go in bigger chunks, so I'm probably gonna go up 100 each time. Uh, and then we'll see where we end up, and then we'll see what our final score is compared to our original. So my side camera and my other camera's battery have both died, so we're gonna wrap up here. We finished up our overclock with a plus 115 megahertz overclock on the core and a plus 800 megahertz overclock on our memory. It ended up giving us a Time Spy Extreme graphic score of 8980, an improvement of 365 points over our original stock configuration, which is significant. It is definitely something that you will notice in games. It will get you some higher frame rates in your favorite titles, uh, but it is gonna generate more heat. And as a result, like we discussed earlier, you're probably gonna have to either increase your fan speed or be okay with the fan curve allowing the fans to ramp up and down as necessary. 
you might get a little more noise that way. However, a lot of people came in with headphones on, don't really care. They just want the best performance and this is kind of how you get it. I hope that this brief tutorial showed you guys how to overclock the new RTX 3080 and what kind of performance you might expect. If you like this content, make sure to get subscribed to the channel if you are not already. And thank you so much for watching this video. Later.